Himali da Silva is a speech and language therapist specializing in infant feeding disorders. Also, she is a board certified lactation consultant and worked in Sri Lanka for many years promoting breastfeeding. She trained community midwives and NICU nurses in lactation management. And with this knowledge and experience, she wrote a guide on working with infants with feeding difficulties in many different low income countries. Himali, can I please ask you to go ahead? Thank you, Harriet. And thank you to MSF for inviting me today on behalf of um, many lactation uh, pioneers and breastfeeding mother and infant dyads to um, speak about the importance of lactation support in humanitarian settings. Next slide, please. Let's have a look at some of the infants on this slide. They're infants you would meet in your day-to-day -day work on a regular basis. Infants who are sleepy, infants born very premature with IUGR, malnourished. I want you to think about such an infant you met recently. Were they breastfeeding? If they weren't, did you think they could breastfeed with support? Whilst you have a think about that, I want us to now cast our mind to information that we all know very well, the benefits of breastfeeding and why all these infants should breastfeed. Next slide, please. On this slide, you will see an outline of the key developmental, nutritional, health, and financial benefits for not just the infant, but, but also for the mother. So really the question is, why are any infants denied of these benefits? Introducing an infant to formula feeds not only denies them of the benefits of breast milk, but also exposes them to many risks and of course places a heavy financial burden on the family. Next slide, please. Here are three such infants I met working in three different countries. They didn't receive the support they need, the basic care to breastfeed when they were discharged from hospital post birth. And they were introduced to formula feeding when they got home and had to come back in. The first infant came back jaundiced, the second infant malnourished, and the third infant on the photograph with a bilateral cleft lip and palate came back with an ear infection and a chest infection. And they then received the, the necessary support to successfully breastfeed. Next slide, please. So how can we get this right? You will meet three more infants now. We're gonna watch two video clips. The first video will show you an, an infant who was born less than 700 grams and premature his first attempt at breastfeeding. You'll see for a while, nothing really happened. And then the flutter of the suck, the first step towards establishing successful feeding. And then you'll meet twin girls learning to breastfeed together. Whilst watching these videos, I want you to really think about what makes breastfeeding possible for some of these infants. There are clues in the videos. Let's share the two videos now, thank you. Yeah, she puts her arm, but keeps moving her I'm 
Thank you. Desire to breastfeed, not just of the mother and the infant, but also from all of us who have supported these infants as healthcare professionals, is absolutely essential to make sure that breastfeeding is initiated in a timely manner. Can we have the next slide, please? And also the support and, um, and ongoing support from the community is essential to make sure that breastfeeding is continued. We should all be reminded of the benefits of breastfeeding from both the mother and the infant. And the closest to my heart amongst all of these is the skilled and trained professionals being around these infants. This means not the mother not being told repeatedly to feed their infant, but to really see what's going on, what's going wrong, and to provide that hands-on support, problem-solving individual difficulties. And to this end, we need commitment from organizations such as hospitals, NGOs, and INGOs. Next slide, please. So let's see how can we get this right. Here are seven simple steps that I've found very effective in helping over 50% of vulnerable infants to establish breastfeeding successfully. And um, without going through them one by one, let's move on to the next slide. You will see some of them, some of the key features illustrated in this poster, which is available to you in the resource pack. But I'm going to show you a, a video of the seven steps being put into action. Next video. Next slide, please. So you see, it's not impossible to provide uh, basic support for majority of the infants that you need. But I know that this is not all for all of the infants. Some of them might need a little bit more help than what you saw in this video. Next slide, please. So then you need to ask yourself, what's going wrong? Is feeding adequate? Is feeding safe? meaning is some of the milk trickling into the baby's lungs when they feed. Next slide, please. And if that's the case, we have to find out where the difficulties are. Is this to do with the latch, with the sucking, with the coordination of the suck-swallow breathing pattern? Is it with the swallowing itself? Or is it with the tolerance of milk? Next slide, please. Feeding difficulties are most often the first indication of something going wrong with the baby. It may be that they have an evolving neurodisability or an issue with something anatomically wrong or malnutrition identity unidentified. So look out for these red flags when you're working with these infants 
to see if their body is stiff to touch. When they're attaching to the breast, is their jaw opening excessively or is it very clenched and tight? When they're attempting to suck on the breast, do you feel that they're chomping, moving their jaw up and down rather than in a smooth forwards, backwards movement? Is there enough milk transfer? If they're swallowing, then can you hear the swallow? Are they coughing whilst they're swallowing? And during the whole feed, do you find that the breathing is noisy and, and getting labored? Because all of these are risk signs of a baby who's struggling to feed. Next slide, please. And if you find any of these type of infants, they need to be referred up to the next level of care available for further support, for example, with an NG tube or an orographic tube. And this is not to say um, that these infants can't breastfeed because they can, they just need extra help. To this end, your staff at MSF can be skilled up and you can request for such help uh, because help is available in order to train yourself up to help these infants to breastfeed. I'm a clinician like you. I work with infants and mothers every day. And every day I learn what is possible for all infants in the world. And I want to be a part of that journey with you. So reach out if you need help with any of the infants in your care who you think meet these criteria who need extra help to breastfeed. Thank you very much.